What's it like inside the FIA's only indoor-outdoor circuit? Let's take a look. The race takes place in London's Excel Centre, which hosts Comic-Cons and other conventions all year round. And so when you enter the fan zone, it feels like a giant convention. Very spread out, but enough room for the huge crowd. Uh, there was queues for the fan store the whole day, pretty much, before the race. Uh, and all the flags that were available for each team, like you could tell that the popular teams had run out before I even got there. One of the first things I had to do, of course, was the sim racing section. Uh, they had rigs with R Factor 2 and a mod of the XL London track. Last year's layout uh, that isn't available for R Factor 2, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I want to drive it, but you can't get this one, which is a shame. Uh, I asked uh, one of the guys that was helping me uh, get set up if he could turn off the driving aids, uh, but unfortunately he had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, so I had the steering assist turned on, and I hate that in our factor too. The car felt really weird. So I only managed 42nd, which probably was less by the end of the day. That was early on. Uh, so yeah, not a great time. They had show cars of the Gen 1 and Gen 2 cars uh, on display. They didn't have the Gen 3 car, but there was some sort of event you could book and queue up to go into for the Gen 3 car, which I didn't have time or didn't pre-book for. But they did have the Nissan concept car on show, uh, which looks really cool, even if it will never exist on the road, probably. There was other stuff like a wall you can colour in and leave your message, uh, a Fly Saudi uh, sort of exhibit, which I didn't bother queuing for, and green things typical for Formula E. You could pl take a plant pot home or something and scale electrics. Uh, powered by cycling and even a gym. Between qualifying and the race there was a live music performance by Gracie uh, which is really loud. <laughs> uh, it was a proper concert, proper performance, uh, which is kind of cool to see, uh, you know, music at a sport event isn't that weird but since it's all inside it really felt like a concert venue rather than a racetrack. Now the racetrack itself, in the opposite convention hall you just find the back of a grandstand you climb up and then boom you're suddenly at a racetrack and i don't know what this feels like to be honest it feels obviously kind of like you're at a racetrack but then it's all inside i, I don't really know it doesn't feel like a stadium but it doesn't feel like a racetrack either it's a very very unique track here's some footage from turn one uh, where i was sitting there's a decent overtaking opportunity here although not great uh, but there's a fair bit of action during the race here They gave us a wristband, which is supposed to light up with the flag. It's like a yellow flag, it would turn yellow. Uh, but it kind of stopped working mid-race for me. There was a live music performance before the start of the race as well. And of course, they made the most of the indoor lighting they had at the XL. And this is just basically when the drivers are preparing for the, for the race, right before. All this light going on. It was really weird, but really cool. Here's the footage I took of the race start and during the race. It was hard to get a good view of the podium unless your seat was literally opposite it, so here's the best footage I could get of it. Uh, they certainly put on a good show during the podium and before the race from this spot. It was really cool. Hope you enjoyed watching this, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of this venue, this event, uh, and uh, make sure to follow me on Twitch where I do my live streams these days. Catch you later.